Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be reviewing every description of every non-hybrid, of course, except for Apexes and Rexy, uh, because, you know. So we're going to start off with Acrocanthosaurus. Acrocanthosaurus was the largest carnivore in North America during the early Cretaceous period. The theropod evolved with massive holes called fenestra on the sides of its skull, easing the way of its 51 inch long head. Like, don't massive theropods, most of them, if not all of them, have fenestra? Anyway, we're now moving into Iloratos. Iloratos is an extinct genus of panda, which in Wikipedia, it doesn't explicitly say that Iloropodony equals a panda. Iloratos is part of the tribe Iloropodini, which is the same that contains the giant panda. Now let's move on to the Alanqua. The lens-like bill of the Alanqua has been compared to the bill of the great blue heron and other large fish-eating birds. The Alanqua is particularly adept at using this bill to strike quickly at its targets and escape before retaliation. Which I have no idea if the Alanqua would actually use its bill to pierce through its targets. Moving on to the Albertosaurus, which definitely has a problem with its design already, it's much thicker than in reality. Anyway, though this Tyrannosaurid is a top predator in its own ecosystems, the Albertosaurus is much smaller than its relative, the Tyrannosaurus rex. Paleontologists believe this may have led the Albertosaurus to work together in packs like wolves. More observation by the DPG is required. Packs like wolves. Like... I could be wrong, but I doubt it. When it comes to the Albertosaurus's case, I genuinely have no idea. The Allosaurus is a highly active hunter, using its jaw like a hatchet to slash at prey, which this theory is disproven, and it's now completely ridiculous when it comes to current paleontology. So Allosaurus Gen 2. This mature Allosaurus has developed great skill as an ambush hunter, this may be why it is more difficult to find in the wild than a common Allosaurus, which... Allosaurus... Common Allosaurus should have also been... A... Ambush Hunter? Not a bloodthirsty... Dude that just... Goes dry, hunts dry. At 30 feet, the Amargosaurus is smaller than most sauropods, you mean shorter, but its sturdy legs allow it to run faster than many of its relatives. Now, when it comes to design, I'm not sure why they would just simply nab it off from Jurassic World of Games Amargosaurus, which is clearly oversized and doesn't look right either. Its speed also allows the Amargosaurus to escape stalking predators like the T-Rex. I forgot this disclaimer, but this video is just for fun, and it's not meant to be really educational or anything, unlike most other of those paleontology videos. This is a game, so I can excuse these inaccuracies. Amphicyon is renowned for being one of the most adaptable mammals to exist. For 15 million years in the Miocene, these four-legged carnivores thrived across Europe, Asia, North America, and Africa. Okay, so I see nothing wrong. Except that it's around 16 million years and not 15 million years, but that mistake is forgivable in the end. Also, I can excuse this Allosaurus inaccuracy because Jurassic World Alive was made in 2018 and Allosaurus was one of the creatures that existed from the very start of the game. In 2018, this theory this hatchet theory was still considered acceptable. Anyway, we're moving on to the Andrew Sarkis. The only known specimen from Andrew Sarkis is a skull that was discovered in Mongolia in 1923. InGen found a way to clone the creature and the results reveal its tough and fatty skin which supports the popular theory that Andrew Sarkis is a relative of the Hippopotamus. Which the species we're talking about is Andrew Sarkis mongoliensis. There is another species called Antrosarchus crassum, which was named in 1977 for two premolars from the Dongjun Formation in Guangxi. 
a full-grown ankylosaurus, ankylosaurus, whatever, anky, requires over 130 pounds of ferns a day. Um, its diet wasn't exclusively of ferns. It was also of various leaves, shrubs, and pulpy fruits. That's as much forage as an African elephant. Anki Gen 2, the unique color of this Ankylosaurus doesn't mean it's any less fortified, even the islands like Ankylosaurus are armored. Moving on to Antarctopelta, this Cretaceous creature is named after its home in Antarctica. Like Notosaurus, Antarctopelta is one of the few members of the Ankylosaurid family to have no tail club, which it's not part of the Ankylosaurid family, rather it's part of the clade Parankylosauria which is part of the suborder Ankylosauria, which is what they most likely meant. Anyway, we're moving on to Anuragonathus. The tiny Anuragonathus is a very neat pterosaur. With a rounded skull, giant eyes, and bat-like wings, the Anuragonathus is ideally adapted for the nighttime aerial acrobatics that come with insect hunting. Even more impressive, the furry filaments on the wings of these tiny creatures help the wing beats stay silent when approaching prey. Advantage shared by modern day owls. Apatosaurus. The long tail of Apatosaurus isn't just for balance. This herbivore can whip its tail fast enough to break the sound barrier or give an attacking carnivore a stern rebuke. Would it hurt itself too? I have no idea. This is not Diplodocus we're talking about. Aramborgiania. The Aramborgiania has an estimated wingspan of 10 meters 30 feet or more. Like other Astarcheterosaurs, this giant flyer is skilled at both hunting from the air and foraging on the ground. Well, 30 feet translates to just 9 meters for Aramborgiania, which is ironically accurate. 10 meters translates to 33 feet. That could be plausible for some of the most some of the more oversized Aramborgianias. Archaeopteryx, once thought to be the earliest bird that ever lived, which Archaeopteryx is not even a bird. Archaeopteryx's name means ancient wing. Though tiny, this bird plays a giant role in the history of science, helping to prove the theory of evolution only two days after Darwin's On the Origin of Species was first published. Now let's move on to Archaeotherium. Archaeotherium was a ravenous omnivore. It had wide cheekbones, teeth unlike any modern creature, and was roughly the same size as a modern bull. It's no surprise Archaeotherium translates to ancient beast. Let's move on to Arctodus. The Arctodus or short-faced bear, that term belongs to a subfamily the Arctodus is part of, may be the largest mammalian carnivore to ever live on land in North America. This Pleistocene predatory scavenger could grow up to 12 feet tall. How did scientists know this? They found Arctodus claw marks 15 feet up a cave wall in Missouri, which I can't find a source for. It's 15 feet up a cave wall. Okay. So, next one Arctops. Arctops. Arctops is a vicious hunter who thrived in South, South, South Africa during the late Permian period. This carnivore's name means bare face because the shape of its skull resembles that of a modern day brown bear. Trust me, I looked it up and it's not true. Anyway, Argentavis, this soaring cynozoic creature is among the largest birds to ever fly. The wingspan is 6 meters or more, it covers hundreds of kilometers a day, her days is in search for a carrion, carrion, whatever. DPG members have even observed Argentavis using its aerial advantage to chase powerful predators like Smilodon for their kills. Now, even though this statement is normally inaccurate, the description said DPG members have even observed Argentavis using its aerial advantage. DPG members, so it's taking the modern times, so so they must have created Smilodon and Argentavis, so it's forgivable. Also, it is the largest bird to fly. Pelagornus' wingspan is longer, but Pelagornus is still smaller than Argentavis. Argentinosaurus, this relative of the Apatosaur specializes in picking leaves from forest canopies. It also uses impressive size for stomping attacks against predators. 
The first part of this description is immensely wrong. The thing that separates Apatosaurus and Argentinosaurus is from the clade Neosauropoda, which splits into Diplodocoida, which the Apatosaurus is in, and Macronaria, where the Argentinosaurus is in, the Bahadasaurus. The long neck vertebrae on the small sauropod are curved forward. This distinct curve sets the Bahadasaurus apart from its close relative, the Amargosaurus. Baryonyx, the thumb claws of Baryonyx are over a foot long, giving this crocodile-faced carnivore a deadly grip. Baryonyx is a piscivore, more of a piscivore than a carnivore. Also, the thumb claws of Baryonyx is just around a foot long. Baryonyx Gen 2. Both gens of the Baryonyx exhibit behavior very similar to modern crocodiles. These dinosaurs clap their jaws and splash in the water to communicate. Also, when it comes to stuff like blue, bumpy, I'm not going to reveal though I'm not going to review those because those are fictional characters as well. So we're going to go straight to the Beelzy Buffalo. Commonly called the Devil Frog, the Beelzy Buffalo lived in Madagascar in the Cretaceous period. With a large and strong jaw, Beelzy Buffalo may have even preyed upon infant dinosaurs. So we're now skipping beta and blue, we're now going to go for Brachiosaurus. The deep resonating calls of the social and curious herbivore can carry for miles. And then we got the Brontotherium, also known as Megacerops. Brontotherium resembles a giant rhinoceros with two horns instead of one. In fact, the Brontotherium aka Megacerops is more closely related to a horse than a rhino. This gigantic armored herbivore stands 8 feet tall at the shoulders, almost the size of an African forest elephant. Size. Um, I'm not sure if that's the correct way to use size. Now let's move on to Carbonemis. Like most members of the Potosnemididae Potos family, Carbonemis has a shell streamlined for swimming. The Carbonemis shell can grow to nearly 2 meters in length making one of the largest turtles in the world. Carnotaurus. The Carnotaurus always wolfs down its food. This theropod notes that its rival Tyrannosaurus, why, is an opportunistic hunter and can show to take over the carcasses. Okay, so we're talking about Jurassic Park slash Jurassic World over here. So uh, I could forgive that, even though the Carnotaurus and T-Rex most definitely did not coexist in real life. Okay, so, Ceratosaurus, they added a wild unique for some reason. Why did they make it unique? Jam City has gone crazy. Lydia slash Jam City, anyway. This powerful theropod can be distinguished by the bladed horn on its snout. Slightly smaller than the T-Rex. It's way smaller than the T-Rex. Ceratosaurus is an aggressive predator, using its strength and resilience to attack prey head-on. Um, uh, I don't know how to, okay, okay. As I mentioned before, it's way smaller than a T-Rex. Also, its horn is most likely used for display purposes. I'm not exactly sure why Ludia slash Jam City would make the Ceratosaurus have a large theropod animation instead of a medium theropod animation, but okay. The megafaunal cervid Cervalces is an ancestor of many modern deer. The reasons of this majestic herbivore's extinction still remain unknown. It might have been overhunted by ancient humans or pushed out of its ecological niche by other more modern herbivores. Further observation by the DPG is required. Oops, I accidentally clicked on Charlie. So uh, we're gonna go to Solurosauravis, the prehistoric flying lizard is actually more of a glider. Thin bones growing from the side of Solurosauravis' body support wing-like membranes, which allow this tiny creature to ride the air when leaping between trees. 
Okay, so come saw Nathus, although most of Peter Lutlow's expedition on Isla Sorna fell victim to the Moody Islands Raptors, some missing team members also suspect they have been hunted by roving flocks of these compies, as they are often called. The term compie is actually the shortened form of pro Comsoc Nathus. That's in the novel. In the film, it's just Comsoganathus. Comsoganathus is a crafty carnivore that loves to work together with other members of its flock. I know. Although they prefer smaller prey when trained correctly, this team of tiny terrors can take down creatures much larger in size. Pretend that they didn't state it. Okay, let's go back to Concavenator. Like a cat, Concavenator has bristles on its arms that allow it to better detect and manipulate prey between its claws. Moving on to Dakota Raptor. Dakota Raptor is 18 feet in length, placing it second to Utah Raptor on this list of largest known dromaeosaurs. Longest known, with attachment points for Panaceus Pene uh, feathers, whatever. On its forearm bones, Dakota Raptor is also one of few dinosaurs confirmed to have feathers like. Don't draw me a sores and oh my goodness! Look at this grammar mistake. Dakota Raptor is also one of the few dinosaurus. Anyway, let's pretend we didn't read that. Darnotaurus means Darwin's wing. This creature is believed to have evolved from two separate suborders of pterosaurs, which supports Charles Darwin's evolutionary theory. Wait, let's move on to what is it? Dinochirus. Dinochirus. Denikyrus is an omnivore, using its massive claws to dig and fish. Which, from the sources I can find, it's not wrong. So, moving to Deinonychus. Paleontologists begin, began to consider the possibility that dinosaurs may have been warm-blooded animals while studying Deinonychus. This study led to the dinosaur renaissance, a scientific revolution that contradicts the idea that all dinosaurs were reptilian. Um, so are you blind that... Dinosaurs weren't reptilian. Like, dinosaurs are part reptilian group. It's just that they're warm blooded reptiles. Have you heard of warm blooded reptiles before? And Ethereum, this gentle giant. Like, herbivores aren't gentle. It's one of the largest mammals to ever walk the earth. Standing 4 to 5 feet tall, the Dinotherium has a shorter stockier trunk than modern elephants. Its inverted tusks may seem strange to some DBG members. But this orientation helps the dinosaurs to bark and break branches from trees during feeding. Okay, so what's next? Dilophosaurus. Dilophosaurus primarily hunts by ambush, trying to catch victims unawares. Of course, they have those frills. Those frills from Jurassic Park. So does Dilophosaurus Gen 2. Like its relative, this uniquely colored Dilophosaurus prefers to hunt by ambush than outright attack. There we go. And then we got Dimetrodon, engineered by Biosyn. Dimetrodon's ear-piercing loud screech and shrieks are almost deafening as it stalks its prey deep in the underground amber mines of Biosyn Valley. I remember the original description wasn't that. Let me try and look it up. Paleontologists still debate the evolutionary reasoning behind Dimetrodon's sail. Some think it's for display or to regulate body temperature. Others think it might have been a good place for extra muscle attachment. Okay, so some say it's for thermal regulation, some say it's for sexual selection, some say is that the long neural spines could have stabilized the trunk by restricting up and down movement which will allow for a more efficient side to side movement while walking. Let's move on to Dimetrodon Gen 2. The stock gear more common Dimetrodon is seemingly sluggish until it pounces in pursuit of prey. Dimorphodon. Dimorphodon are not generally aggressive or easily spooked. They are chatty pterosaurs known to gibber, gibber and screech. Callus, also known as Flaffy, when if you are a fan of Game Fever. The odd shape of the Diplocallus' skull helps it glide through the water. It could have been more used to lift, basically, a force, a fluid flowing around an object exerts a force on it. Lift is the component of this force that is perpendicular to the oncoming flow direction. This genetic variation of the Diplocallus genome is more abundant in the wild than its relative. Maybe the abundance accounts for its more territorial nature. Okay, Diplodocus now. Even though they're among the largest of all dinosaurs, all Diplodocus hatch out eggs no longer than a 
explore the grapefruit. Dire wolf, about 25% larger than a modern <coughs> gray wolf. The dire wolf specialized in large prey, competing with Smilodon for Pleistocene bison, camel, and deer. This prehistoric creature went extinct Ray did. In the Pleistocene megafaunal extinction roughly 10,000 years ago, it went extinct around 9,500 years ago. The dire wolf is also around the same size as the largest modern gray wolves, the Yukon wolf and the northwestern wolf, Dodo. Paleontologists working at Jurassic World didn't need fossils to know what Dodo looked like. This large flightless bird didn't go extinct until it was exterminated by humans in the 1600s. More specifically, 1662. Keep collecting DNA so we don't let the dodo down again. Didicarus is pronounced Didicarus and means pestle tail. Fractures on the fossils of these ancient armadillos prove that they use their tails like pestles to crush, crush each other during duels. Dracorex, which is basically just a juvenile Pachycephalosaurus, the flathead of Dracorex is covered with pointed spikes, which prevents predators from trying to attack it head on. Dracorex Gen 2. Dracorax is a social creature. Prefers groups to solitary behavior. It is possible both gens of this creature cohabited in their prehistoric environments. Why Dracorax Gen 2? Gen 2. This is supposed to be an artificially created Dracorax. Dracovenator. Dracovenator is a swift, pivotal predator. Large enough to take on powerful opponents, swift enough to evade their attacks, Dracovenator uses its dodge and distraction to remain on the attack, which is based on its abilities here. And, uh, did not really talk about actual Dracovenator facts or something. Okay, Dracovenator was quite large. You know, that's a fact. Dronotus. The towering Dronotus measures an incredible 85 feet long and weighs 65 tons. It's just 44 tons, actually. The name Dronotus means fear nothing because herbivores can be pretty tough, too. Um, so you're implying that herbivores are not tough most of the time. Um, that's just not good at all. Anyway, let's sung. The curse now that Sungaritaris helps it to collect the shellfish that serve as one of its dietary staples, the strongest of the counterattack specialized pterosaurs. Sungaritaris can increase its damage over multiple attacks, which is based on this ability, this set of abilities over here. The ferocious strike. And then we'll be moving on to Echo. No, 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 not Echo. I always forget. Then we get Adaphosaurus. Adaphosaurus was one of the first herbivorous tetrapods to exist. The paleontologists who discovered this creature named it Pavement Lizard after noticing its unusually dense tooth distribution. Let's move on to Edmontosaurus. Edmontosaurus is fast for its size, running at speeds of over 25 miles per hour. Ineosaurus. The Ineosaurus is a relative of the Triceratops. Um, Ceratops. Teratopsid. Ceratops, with a large defensive skull plane unique and curved horn, this dinosaur is famous for ramming attacks. Like, this curved horn over here is usually not suitable for attacking. It's morely, it's more so used as a display. Elasmothenia, which should have a shorter horn. This ancient rhinoceros stands up to 6 feet, 2 meters high at the shoulder, taller than any modern relative. Use its large horn foraging, defense, and attracting mates. Foraging. Um, I have no idea if, if it's large horns used for foraging. This this is definitely outdated. Anyway, we have Entelodon, better known as Terminator Pig, which is not Entelodon is not closely related to a pig in the slightest. This ferocious omnivore self disputes through jaw wrestling matches, which is a good. Which is a accurate behavior. A Rimatherium was 19 feet long instead of 13 feet tall, tall, making it one of the largest slots to ever exist. Unlike most ancient slots, Rimatherium fossils have been excavated in both North and South America, giving it the nickname Pan American Ground Sloth. Rimatherium lived in Southern North America, Central America, and Northern South America. So, I guess. There we go. Now let's move on to Erlikosaurus. This incredibly rare dinosaur is intelligent 
and elusive. Its powerful hearing allows it to avoid predators. Relicosaurus Gen 2, when it attempt to reverse engineer a Force Rakos or Terror Bird, Force Rakity, Force Rakos is just a genus name. Terror Bird applies to Force Rakity in the entire family. From Erlikosaurus DNA failed, this rare Erlikosaurus was produced. Okay. Um, so, Force Rakos, very colorful, apparently. Euclidoceros. Euclidoceros fossils have been discovered in Europe, the Middle East, and Asia. These fossils reveal the deer's majestic eight foot long antlers. The antlers of Euclidoceros are split into a great number of tines, which help distinguish their fossils from those of its relative Megaloceros. We're still not even halfway. Muupocephalus means well armed head. The name comes from the stick arm around the face of this ankylosaurid. Is Euphocephalus Fukuisaurus discovered in the Fukui Prefecture of Japan? The peaceful Fukuisaurus is relatively small ornithomimid. Ornithomimid. It's an ornithopod. How did Ludius slash Jam City confuse an ornithopod with an ornithomimid? That's absolutely insane. It measures roughly 4.5 meters in length. 400 kilograms. Gallimimus is among the largest of the ornithomimosaurs, or what experts call ostrich mimic dinosaurs. Have they heard of Dinochirus before? Dinosaurus, which is, uh, which is not accurate. Like this one, this design over here. It's supposed to be Navdoc from Jurassic World Dominion, as expected. This Cretaceous period theropod is the largest known terrestrial carnivore. Biosyn, yeah. Biosyn Gigantosaurus. The Biosyn engineered Gigantosaurus measures approximately 43 feet in length and can reach speeds up to 30 miles per hour. I can't really comment on that because this uh, that's Biosyn Gigantosaurus, not the accurate Gigantosaurus. Giraffe Titan. For some time, this near 40 foot tall sauropod was considered the largest dinosaur to ever live. The discovery of Titanosaurus says, Elal Titan. Since I have challenge, this claim. Elal Titan was discovered in 2012, and from the 1990s to 2010s, like, there's Argentinosaurus as well. Between 1914 and the 1990s, Giraffe Titan was claimed to be the largest dinosaur known, ignoring the possibly larger but lost Maraponosaurus, and thus the largest land animal in history. Glyptodon. Glyptodon is an ancient relative of the modern armadillo. It first appeared during the Pliocene, it actually appeared in the Pleistocene, and for more than 5 million years, it only existed for around 2.5 million years, Glyptodon, Glyptodon, how do you spell that, thrived on plants, insects, and even carrion. Gorgonops, existing roughly 254 years ago, Gorgonops is the distant ancestor to many of today's mammals. Some scientists believe that Gorgonops marked an evolutionary transition from cold to warm Blooded creatures. Hmm. Synapsid. Okay. Uh, Gorgonops lived around 260 to 254 million years ago. We're moving on to Gorgosaurus. This 30 foot, 5,000 pound Tyrannosaurid dominates as a terrestrial predator. Its strong legs make it one of the fastest hunters among its relatives. Its strong bite can take down almost any opponent. Okay. But Parasaurolophus, Parasaurolophus would simply crush the Gorgosaurus, no problem. Great Pursuit can assemble a giant gharial, a type of crocodile with a long, narrow snout. This snout helps the dinosaur. What? What? It's a crocodile, not a. It's a crocodilian, not a crocodile. Crocodilian. Crocodilian. Well, how do you call the dinosaur? That is illegal. More research needed to find out a unique adaptation helps the creature in other ways. Oh my goodness, this description here, dinosaur, is just breaking my heart. Host Eagle. The Host Eagle is the largest eagle ever discovered, likely evolving to such size in order to prey on 500 pound flightless birds inhabiting its New Zealand home. Okay. Both gens of Host Eagle have a nine foot wingspan. That's nearly twice the length of a modern day bald eagle. Okay, that's Host Eagle Gen 2 for ya. 
Anyway, we have Hatagopteryx. Hatagopteryx was the apex predator of Hatak Island, a prehistoric landform in the Tethi Sea. With no large theropods on a secluded isle, this pterosaur reigned supreme. Okay, nothing wrong with that. Let's move on to Guanadon. This bulky herbivore can switch from quadrupedal to bipedal motion, making it easier to reach leaves on trees. Its flexible toes also helps it grip plant matter. Uh, okay. Grip plant matter for the grass, right? Innostrantsevia is the largest known Gorgonopsidae, an ancient family of saber toothed predators. This carnivore has highly developed canine teeth, which are put to work while hunting its preferred meal, Scutosaurus. Unfortunately for Innostrantsevia, Scutosaurus' armored body is difficult for even a saber tooth to penetrate. I plan to stop at Irritator Gen 2. Like, I want to create a part 2. Irritator. The Irritator's name describes the feeling that the paleontologist had to spend many hours restoring its skull. This pesky creature is actually a relative of the vicious Spinosaurus. Okay. Finally, we have the Irritator Gen 2. The piss pale Irritator may have developed its unique coloring to camouflage in the grassland environment. More data on the creature's behavior in the wild is needed to confirm this theory. The first part is finished. So, um, stay tuned for the second part, I guess. There we go. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. See y'all next time.